sentences. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning, good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome to the Sunrise Safari on a very cloudy and windy morning out here on Eco Training. Hope everybody's excited today to see what the bush has in store for us. And of course we have started now with a group of Impala just trying their best to hunker out of the wind and stay nice and warm. Morning, morning everybody. Welcome, welcome. My name's Andrew. That's Cameron behind the camera. Yeah, and as I mentioned, it's uh, quite cloudy and windy this morning, which is a big break from what we had yesterday with 33 degrees Celsius. So we're going to try and make the most of it this morning. But yes, let's go back to these impalas that are just milling around here. I don't want them to disappear. Cameron, we might need to yeah. re-angle. Yeah, okay. We are just going to re-angle. Now, don't forget that we are live and interactive. So if you want to send us some questions, you are more than welcome to. And if you'd like to go into the website and register yourself, you can do so. Also, you can watch us on the app. And then if you want to subscribe on YouTube um, to get some nice notifications on all the cool things that we're seeing out in the bush. So always keep that in mind. Look at that, eh? some serious weather at the moment. And these impalas are right in the middle of it all. And we're gonna try and understand why. Why would they wanna do that? And in a day like today, when the wind is howling, shame, they're gonna be very nervous. They're not gonna be able to smell, hear properly. And so it puts them in quite a vulnerable state. And so sometimes what they do is they just hang around the open areas and look out for danger. Because as we know, in parlors, they get eaten by all sorts of things. And so they definitely need to watch out from all angles on a windy day like today. Picasso, thanks for your comment there. Definitely, we're hoping it's going to be a spectacular day. And uh, we are going to see what nature has in store for us this morning. Of course, we do have a plan, what we would like to look for. Remember yesterday, I don't know if you were with us during the sunset safari, but uh, there was, uh, we saw lions for a brief moment. So they could very well still be in the area. From what we saw yesterday, the Mangati pride, they did move a little bit to the east. So they could be in the eastern part, but yeah, they can change direction anytime they want and uh, they might uh, be in the north even. We're going to be heading north this morning, just having a look what's uh, happening out there. We're going to head up to Impala Plains, Leopard Dam, those sort of areas and uh, just see what's going on there. Oh, I believe it's raining quite heavily in Amakala at the moment. Not sure if they're going to be joining us. But if they do, it'll be quite nice if uh, we can see exactly what's happening at Amakala. I believe the Bushman's River is looking spectacular at the moment. Vic from South Carolina. Wow, that's a long way, hey? It's nice to get a, a comment from you. And it's nice to have you on board with us this morning on safari. And I like the way that Ralph puts it, the biggest safari in the world. That's exactly what we do. Now we can see that uh, some of these impalas are looking different in their coloring. There's some dark ones, there's some light ones as well. So the dark ones are phyla erecting the fur. They are feeling cold. So to raise up the fur, traps in the heat, and that way they're able to stay warm. It's just amazing how different animals have got different ways of thermal regulating themselves. See, they're slowly heading towards the cover. I think the wind is just getting a bit too much for them. I'm not sure if the wind is going to persist uh, this morning. I think there's a possibility it's going to die off from what I've noticed in the past. And there's a beautiful ram impala over there. Well, speaking about weather, I think let's go and have a look at what the weather's doing in all the locations. We 
are the champions. We are the champions. Those are the losers, but we are the champions of the world. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to a nice overcast and wet morning here at Juma Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sands in Pumalanga Province. I am Gabe Harmer, also known as Game Ranger Gabe. And behind the camera today, with a smaller jacket than me because of his muscles, is Mpo. Hello, Mpo. Guys, it is a lovely, lovely morning for wild dogs. And that's about as much as I can tell you. That's what I'm hoping for. But spirits are high. Spirits are high because of the massive victory last night. We beat England by one point, we beat France by one point, and then we beat New Zealand by one point, just to prove a point. It was beautiful. I've never seen such camaraderie. <laughs> but joining me on Juma this morning is also Taylor. She's somewhere around here looking for some animals. <laughs> Envision, thank you so much. We couldn't have done it without the whole country, to be honest with you. Everyone was behind the spring box. Spring boxer! And that's all that counts. We were meant to have a, and Paul was convinced we were going to have a public holiday on Monday. It should be win, but he hasn't heard any updates on that yet. So we're waiting for that to be confirmed. I heard some kudus barking here last night after the rugby. So I'm just having a little bit of a scratch around, seeing if there's not a, a rosetted cat sitting in a tree somewhere, or if there's any tracks going along here. Tal and Gert have moved a bit more east. I don't know if they maybe might be following up on the Talamati breakaway sub-adults that we spent the drive with yesterday. They obviously moved off in an easterly direction, and I did eventually get confirmation that it was the S8 male there. <laughs> Darcy Miller, <laughs> a victory dance by each naturalist. No, I, I can, as you, as you heard, I can barely sing. Oh, okay, we've got lion tracks here. So this is what upset the kudus last night, and they're heading up in this direction. And it does look like it was maybe the subadult. So those are small lion tracks. Ah, <sighs> victory dance, jeez. It was enough that I had to think about a song. Now I have to try and dance as well. I'll try and get a unicycle and do it all at once. That would be quite entertaining. That would be a very... <laughs> Sorry guys. Someone suggested that Mpo should dance for us, but I don't know. He looks, he looks pretty bleak to be out in the weather in the first place. So I'm not going to ask him for anything just in case. Yo. That wind is howling. Just in case I put my own life at risk, I just want to have a look. Max, a shout out, thank you so much for the rain jacket. It does make me look a lot bigger and stronger than what I actually am. Okay. Hey. They come off the rodeo somewhere now. I can't see these line tracks. Here we are. Strange. I didn't see them cross over the road. Let's go have a look. Are you an Africam enthusiast who craves more than just a front row seat to the wild? With Africam Premium, you get to enjoy ad free Africam streams. Take jaw-dropping shots and participate in exciting photo competitions. Dive into the world of safari snaps. Africam Premium gives you access to exclusive content, including shows, educational courses, and behind-the-scenes footage that you won't find anywhere else. Join us today and make the wild your playground.
Well, what a day it is. No blue skies for us for the next little while. So we might as well just get stuck into it and enjoy the miserableness that the weather is going to be, I think, until Wednesday or Thursday. But anyways, I am prepared this time. My name is Taylor McCurdy and on camera with me today is Gat. And we're very excited to be out here sharing this wonderful morning with all of you. Have no idea what we're going to find on this game drive, but we'll continue in that direction. So if you did watch the sunset safari, you would have seen that Kat and Gabriel were with the Talamati breakaways. And Kat was telling me that they were kind of moving in this direction. So that's what we're going to do. We're also going to just move in this direction. Whether or not we'll see tracks on the, the ground, eh. But we'll, we'll kind of figure it out as we, as we go. Oh, well done, South Africa, winning the Rugby World Cup by the skin of their teeth. My goodness. Uh, they are really lucky that New Zealand forgot how to kick. But, uh, but anyways, it was a good game. I will be sharing some of my personal highlights from the entire game. Some of them have something to do with rugby, others don't, naturally. Um, but it was quite entertaining. I think I'm really funny when I make commentary. It normally has nothing to do with rugby anyways, but I just like to tease situations. Uh, Ellen, you said that you're buckled up and, and ready to... to be weird when you get into a game drive versus that. You just want to, you know, and, and strap in, but... Guys, those tracks didn't cross over Vuyotela access. Well, not that I could see, but we're here on Galago now. Galago shortcut. Just having a little bit of a squizzeroo. Seeing if we can't spot some. I'm taking it nice and easy this morning. Just because it was a bit of a late one and my eyes aren't too sharp. And they're, a bit, um, they're a bit shot at the moment. I have had a cup of coffee so I can... I can feel I'm getting ready for the morning. I'm hoping. I'm also a little bit puzzled there just because I found one set of tracks. There was no other other walking around there. So I'm not too sure. I think maybe I hope it wasn't another one that got lost. I hope they're all together and they didn't all lose each other. Or I could be very, very confused and that could be a male leopard. It could have been Molawati. Maybe, but for now, until we see the animal and some more tracks, I'm not too sure, but that was a little bit too big. I know more white is a big cat, but those were a little bit too big and a bit too chunky for leopard tracks. So let's see, let's have a look. I decided to give the Galago pan a Guys, I'm going to send you over to Mr. Andrew up north at Eco Training while I carry on with my mission here. I believe he's got something for you guys. Thanks, Gabe, and you're right. We have found something pretty interesting here, and it is a zebra not doing too well. And I'm just going to say this now, that a little bit of sensitivity over here, and uh, yeah, just uh, use a little bit of discretion if you're gonna watch this, but it is a little bit gruesome. This zebra is in terrible condition at the moment and has been attacked by lions. Um, I did hear some of the guides yesterday, they spoke about it, um, so it's definitely not done from last night, it might have been the night before or the previous night to that, but definitely is lions that did this. If you have a look really carefully, you can actually see the claw marks on the hind section there, but by the grace of, uh, of this one and its luck, it managed to get away. Just looking at these injuries, the, the debate is, is this zebra going to survive? And I'm going to say yes. You'd be very, very surprised how strong and resilient animals are out in the nature. 
and even the most gruesome of injuries give it enough time and uh, hopefully the predator doesn't catch this individual then it will survive but limping around like this is going to attract a lot of unwanted attention and then of course open wounds which could still be dropping blood um, if that's the case then hyenas will pick up on that blood trail and they will follow it straight to the zebra and uh, but we'll see we'll play it by ear the next few days we know where the zebra is hanging around and if we see it again we'll give you some daily updates shame look at those claw marks that must have been really painful but it's amazing as you watch the zebra even though it's got some open wounds on it and uh, it got attacked by lions i mean it's not showing signs that it's in pain like you know humans will often will moan and and and, and make noise and things being in pain but the zebra just limps along as if uh, it's not in too much pain but there will definitely be some discomfort there there's a whole flap on the underbelly underbelly that's uh, busy hanging there so luckily the zebra managed to get away now there are some other zebras around here so he's not entirely alone so that'll increase its chance of surviving having uh, you know just a little bit of, uh, of numbers around him that is going to be able to you know see other predators and get help from the others if it's totally alone and uh, totally vulnerable then it is likely that uh, predators are probably going to catch it wow look at that uh, it's not very nice robin you're 100 percent right they are very resilient their will to survive is just so strong I've seen animals with way worse injuries and give it enough time, um, they survive. I remember working with a male leopard out in the Timbavati game reserve. They got into a fight with lions and uh, managed to survive. But when we found this, this leopard, we thought that he was gone. He was gonna die in a few days. Um, had a broken, if you wanna call it a, a front wrist, and then a, a big chunk of skin missing out the front of the body. But after about three, three weeks or so, that leopard was walking around as if nothing happened and all injuries had healed up. Very interesting. There we go, just hiding behind a little bit of flaky bark thorn there. And he's just keeping an eye on the rest of the dazzle of zebra which are just ahead of it. but slowly but surely he may just get left behind i think this is a stallion it's difficult to say but just looking at the the size of that neck it does look like a stallion if you look very carefully between the tail there you can see that black stripe the general saying is that the males have got a thin black stripe between the the groin there between the two cheeks as the animal moves its tail you have a good look there and that could help you identify whether it's a male or a female but as i say it is very difficult and it's not always reliable. Shame, look at that. Sherry P, yeah, I agree with you. You know, in moments like this, you can't help but just feel the animal's pain. It's gone through something pretty traumatic. And I think, you know, if we had to be attacked by lions and then survive, you know we would have we would be quite disturbed we would have nightmares and it would really affect us but the nature uh, they they can expect it at some point in their life and probably it's not the first time that this zebra has interacted with predators so there's some more over there oh shame look at that eh? are you in search of a unique unforgettable adventure in the wild? Imagine living with the animals you see on TV while getting an inside look at how a live safari TV show operates. We're thrilled to offer this experience through our 7, 14 and 28 day EcoCam experiences. To book your spot, visit wildearth.tv forward slash EcoCam. Come and join us for the bush experience of a lifetime. Thank you. 
we're going to spend a little bit of time watching the zebra but uh, it's what it, one sign that is very good here is the zebra is continuing to feed so although it's terribly injured and not feeling all that great uh, is still taking time to eat and that's essential eat uh, eat uh, enough food and drink enough water and that's really going to help the animal to to heal and get back on track and give it enough time but we know in this environment out in eco training there is uh, you know pride of lions there's really um, good populations of spotted hyena out here um, and so yeah the zebra is going to need to take really really good care of itself Now we look at the mane of zebras. Sorry if I didn't get the name there, but uh, no, that's not intestine that's hanging there. What is uh, hanging there is actually a flap of skin. You see that? And one indicative sign that this is lions that have tried to catch this animal is that when they bring an animal down and they, they you know, they and they, they try and start to feed they usually start to feed on the softer parts so the hindquarters is where they start and then in some some cases they open the stomach pull the intestine out and then carry on but what you're seeing there is definitely a flap of skin that'll ev eventually fall off and then a new layer of skin will form over there and then will close but then it's going to definitely have some scar tissue the stripes on that belly are not going to be how they normally were so they might be a little bit crooked and disjointed all right we're going to continue on a little bit i believe ralph has found a gap in the weather so let's go and join them in the eastern cape Molweni, hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Sunrise Safari where we're coming to you live from the Amakala Game Reserve down in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. And what a wonderful way it is to start the morning with a lovely rainbow in, uh, in the very good presence of uh, Morgan who's on the camera with me. My name is Ralph Kirsten. Hello and welcome aboard the largest and game uh, largest and biggest game drive in the world so it's been very wet here down in the eastern cape there's a lot of roads that are closed that we can't even drive on but it was nice to start with that rainbow as the springboks won the world cup last night so the rainbow nation is being showed with a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow fantastic so our idea for this morning is just to drive on the roads that we're allowed to and see what animals we can find. So we've come out on the northern side of the game reserve and I think I want to try and see if we can find those little art fox that were spotted by Steve in the not, um, uh, recently with Morgan. So he said that they found them and then they haven't really seen them since, but we're going to try to... So, we have some wonderful messages from the USA, and uh, good to hear from you. Well, we're going to try our best this morning, and we're going to see, as I say, if we can find those little art wolves, um, and maybe even batty at foxes. Um, because there's been so much rain, there's uh, actually very few roads that are open. So, we don't really have that much in the way of... Um, roads to drive on so we'll just try our best we did have some hard to best a little bit earlier but we'll see what else we can find and Anne Marie that's exactly what I am hoping for is that the Bushman's River does start to flow it seems like the little tributaries are starting to flow and um, I think if we get any more rain uh, we might actually see the river start to flow and as I've said that I've just spotted some animals that I'm pointing Morgan in the direction of uh, because there looks like we've got ourselves some Cape Mountain zebra that we're just off of that lovely rainbow that has now disappeared so yes indeedy you won't be seeing these kind of zebra anywhere else in any of the other locations because uh, they're very rare, the rarest of all the 
zebras, in fact, and they're also the smallest of all the zebra species, being the Cape Mountain Zebra. Hartman's Mountain Zebra that you find in Namibia, slightly bigger than them. But um, these ones, their stripes don't meet on their stomachs. They don't have the shadow stripe, as you will find with the Birchall's Zebra. And they and they also have a dewlap. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to see if we can um, try and find those art valves with the little uh, youngsters that have been seen by Steve. And while we get a chance just to head on over to where they were last spotted, I'm going to head you back to Juma. We've got a spectacular sight to start the morning off. We've got a small family of Natal Spurfiles pecking around in some fresh elephant dung. It was probably elephant dung from yesterday, to be honest. It doesn't look that fresh. They've kicked it open and they're just having a whale of a time. Peck, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape. I suppose it's quite a nice weather, they don't have to go too far. I'm not quite sure how much food they're going to find in there. It's unusual to hear hippos at a watering hole. No, I'm just joking. We're at, actually on the Bivelsook Dam wall at the moment and we thought we would just stop and have a quick look at the birds. And then I said, I'm not showing you hippos until they do something. And it was amazing, as I said, that they've now moved in our direction. I did say to Khat that I was hoping that one of them would drop down below the surface, chase after the Egyptian geese and then just erupt from below the water and try and catch a goose. But that's, I mean, we've probably got more chance of seeing an aardvark than seeing something like that. But uh, otherwise it's looking very quiet. I was hoping that we'd maybe find the Talamati breakaways this side, but uh, no luck so far but we'll keep on searching for all sorts of life sure now you can see how far away they scrape that dung rolling trouble you said you can't wait for a dung beetle it might be a little bit cold this morning for the beetles but i suppose we'll see but a dung beetle would be wonderful it's nice to see them again There should be lots and lots of different uh, food possibilities for these Natal Spurfell. With all the seeds on the grasses coming back, they might be in there because we know elephants love to eat grass. It might be a few beetles and other arthropods that have already found their way into that dung heap. Hopefully it's still warm inside, at least lukewarm. There's nothing worse than eating cold food on a cold day. But we'll keep on searching for pretty much anything else. But let's uh, head back across to the southern parts of Juma and see what Gabe is looking for. Okay guys, well, I pulled on out the bag this morning. And Paul thought I was joking. I said, look at the left, but I think I'm going to move a little bit forward. Oh. I don't know who the <laughs> I don't know who this is. They're bundled up so small. Oh, that's a tiny leopard. Ah, uh, I don't know, buddy. It's in Sumi. First time for me to meet her. Yo, guys, this block is thick, 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 and I don't want to do too much damage. He's walking down in this direction and I feel helpless. I feel powerless. I can't get in here anywhere. Yeah, let's try. Let's try over here. I think we might come right here. There looks like there's a little bit of a gap here. And poor, please hold on, sir. And this might get a little bit tough. But tough times never last. Only tough people. I don't see her anymore, but that's not a problem for now. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oi, no. Nope. 
and we're up. And I think Nsimi is probably long gone now, but let's have a look. You never know. It was quite a cool spot, very brief, but at least we got to see her momentarily. There is a little bit of a stump here. I'm hoping Wendy handles it like a boss. Oh, she's doing well. Carry on, Wendy. Good girl. Okay. Let's go around here. Nice big open area. Uh huh. Thanks, and Paul. Okay. Oi. Yo, that was a very nice quick view of her. Uh, yeah, I think maybe just to follow a little bit here. I can hear the birds going crazy there. Now they're going crazy down there. Let's see. Flip, I wish I bought my camera with that. was beautiful. She was on top of that stump. But I'm just not too sure where she would have gone from here. Uh, let's have a look. We've got a... We've got a road. Oof, 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 oof. That was a bit uncalled for. Hurting Wendy so early in the morning. I think I can find her tracks crossing the road here. And I do hear the spur file. This block was horrible. That was not fun. And looks like Nsumi's gone into some even thicker stuff now. Let's have a look what happens here. This is hard soil and a very thick block, eh? Hey? A very, very thick block. Yo. This was in. If she's gone into here, yeah, she's gone. I'm definitely not going to be able to follow in here. Yeah. Is that her track there or is that Dahina on the bottom there? <laughs> Let's have a quick squizzeroo. A back and pour. Guys, I'm going to send you over. There she goes ahead of us. <clears throat> I'm going to send you over to Andrew while I try and keep up with this pretty lady. I just saw a flick of a tail over there. I hope it's her. Okay, so we did go to where the hyena den site. Oh, here's an impala, a uh, giraffe right here. We did go to where the hyena den site is, just one of the adults did move away. So we've left the sighting as the youngsters are unattended at the moment and we don't want to cause any trouble there. So we left them open there. But let's take a look at this pregnant female giraffe over here. Now we saw these, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this giraffe here yesterday, I think I just said Impala. <laughs> um, we saw these uh, pregnant giraffe here yesterday, they haven't moved at all from the area where we saw them yesterday. And many of you were watching that sunset that we had, very beautiful sunset with a beautiful tree in the foreground. It was right where we are now and it was just such a pity that our signal wasn't uh, playing along because a elephant started walking on the road towards us and that would have made great for you guys. Okay, so it looks like she's climbing up a little bit there, but uh, I believe Gabe has gotten Sumi at the moment, so let's go and join him. Well, we found her again. She's not enjoying this wet stuff. I'm just going to try and reposition to give you a bit of a better shot there, poor sorry. Although that large fruit of bush willow is very pretty. Oh, maybe she walks. <laughs> I'm sorry, girl. I had a frog in my throat. It poo stings. It was scat, sorry, stinks. I can smell it from here. Oh. First time for me as well, Plate Smasher. First time meeting Nsumi. What a beautiful cat, to be honest with you. Cute little girl. Very cute little face. Nice big eyes. First, when she was all bundled up, I was like, that's your Julie's cub. <laughs> Obviously hoping for the best. There she goes down there. Yo, she's walking through some horrible stuff. But it does look like she's on the prowl. Yeah. I don't know about this. This is going to be hectic. Let's try and pull. 
Sorry. Okay, let's go. Yo. Let me go around that. Oh, there's a big stump there. I don't want to hit that. And there she is over there still. Mm. She's walking down that way. Let's try. I don't know if I'm going to get this. Yo, missions. Early morning missions. Good fun. Also, I just don't want to pinch my tires in any of these stumps that the elephants have now exposed. Because then that's a little bit of extra work this morning on a cold winter. Winter's morning. Can you imagine? Come on, Wendy. Thanks, Sandy. I'm just not too worried about how comfortable she is with the cars. There she goes there. I'm worried about her trying to hunt. The way she's moving and what she's doing is very indicative of her hunting. Or a leopard, leopardess right, hunting. Right. Yeah, I've got her there. She spotted something. I'm gonna get a bit more forward. Oh. Yeah, guys, I don't know if you copy. I'm now on the block with Insumi. If I'm bringing south from Power Lines Road. Yo. She's zigzagging away from me. Hopefully she pops out here in front of us. When he's got this, I hope. But I know on the edge of this, we're almost out. And hopefully it'll lead to quite a nice lighting. Okay, let's try. Yo, yeah, that's what I was worried about. Yee. Okay, red bush willow, bye bye. Red bush willow, bye bye. I don't feel too bad about the red bush willows, they are bush encroachers. The smaller things I worry about quite hectically. Quite a bit. There she goes. There she goes. She's got something. She's chasing something. Yo. Was it a bird she was after? I've lost her now. Oh, jeez. She was running after something and very quickly. I had a little chip from a bird. I wonder if she caught a bird there, or what her story is. Where did you go, Insumi? She ran through here. This is madness, man. <laughs> this is super, super thick stuff. Okay, let's try a little bit more. Hopefully we pick her up here. Otherwise, that was cool. <laughs> Wild babies, little bits of heaven sent down to earth to stumble and tumble their way into our hearts. Join us as we celebrate and find as many wild babies as we can on Safari Live. Vote for who you think is the most adorable. Prepare your hearts for a cuteness overload. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Thank you. 
guys. <laughs> I don't have a nice way of putting this, but um, view discretion might be advised shortly. And Sumi so was heading in this direction. I am kind of hedging my bets on her being. Um, I don't know if she's gonna. She's gonna take this little antelope down, but this is the general direction she was walking in. So I don't know if she's gone down into a bit of a stalk now. I haven't been able to spot her. We are almost directly south from where I last saw her. But if she ran off towards the east, yeah, I should have missed her completely. I almost missed this little thing sitting down. So I'm just holding a little, or trying to buy a little bit of time here, see if she doesn't come a bit closer this way, or if she pops out this way, or what she was thinking. But I would be... I would be ready just to flip through, or mute, or do what you need to do, should this go down. Should have to get relatively close to it, to be successful. I'm literally keeping my eyes peeled and my head on a swivel. Looking all around to see, pick up on a, a sign of a flick of a tail or her slowly making her way through the bush. There's so much noise around. <laughs> the tandy slip. That is very cool. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. There are some Aramark babblers busy calling down to the left there. I don't know if she might be that side. I think I'm going to give it another minute or two. And then I'm going to show her the GGR radar. The GRG radar. <laughs> Elizabeth, tell it. Tell him, tell him, tell him. There is a leopard in the area, buddy. You need to be awake. A lapse of concentration is going to do you no good here. But I also am not too confident that she ran all the way down here. I think we're just building suspense now. <laughs> I'm not too sure that she came down here. It would be epic but I'm just not seeing anything and she was sticking out a little bit like a sore thumb being a bit wet and extremely light beautiful cat though holy wow like the branches are hitting the grass and I find myself breaking my neck to find out what's making the noise through the grass as if it's a leopard slinking through the tall stuff Catherine, thank you for that. Female, my ribs, fluffy ears, and clown, I think you said. No, she was precious. Very, very, very cute. Very cute, actually. Hmm. I don't know about this. Uh, it's coming in from the south, so southerly, moving south to north. Plate smasher, that's what the wind is doing around me right now. I just want to check something. Okay, I'm going to give it a few more seconds and I'm probably going to start my car and start moving off because I do think she's missed this stand book I don't think she's locked onto this and I fear I think she's down here because those Aramark babies keep moving further and further away I think they're following her okay guys I'm going to send you over to Taylor 
for a bit of an update. Let's go have a look. I'm getting prepared because, like I said, I was going to tell you and also show you about some of my highlights from the rugby game. Mister. Firstly, I don't know who half the players are, so you're going to have to forg uh, forgive me. But I do know who Cheslin Colby is because there's a lot of memes and stuff about him and he runs so fast. Anyways, so do you remember that moment where one of the New Zealand rugby players, they have the ball, I don't know which side they're doing it, and they did one of those goose steps and then they tried to run and Cheslin was like, no you won't and grabs him and tackles him and then he picks him up for a moment I thought I was watching Dancing with the Stars and the poor New Zealand rugby player was just there and they almost did a full rotation and then all that I could have in the song in my head was I'm having the time of my life and obviously the New Zealand rugby player very quickly got slammed to the ground it was basically when Cheslin was given the yellow card he wasn't very happy with that but he was also the quickest rugby player to get off of the field so you know nice to be so quick like that anyways that was one of my favorite moments and i kept saying to people send me a video of that place so that i can post it on social media with music jules in new zealand you've said congratulations to south africa but you only south africa only just beat them i agree i said the same thing earlier jules i said by the skin of their teeth and they were very lucky that New Zealand just, I don't know, they completely forgot to kick. But while I go through here really slowly, we watched with a group of people last night here in camp. And we were invited over to Misha's house. And <laughs> there's a lady there. She's fantastic. I feel like Claire would probably, I'm going to talk, it's Claire, anyways. And Claire is probably the most passionate South African I've ever met in my entire life. She cried, she cheered, there were all of the emotions. And I'm also gonna, I'm gonna do another reenactment because it was so great. So anyways, we're sitting there and I can't actually remember what warranted this, but she's standing outside, watching inside, you know, like everyone's standing there very nervously. And there's this, it, oh, it was South Africa tried to do one of those dropkick goals, which they couldn't, pull of one last night it was really great to watch and there's this wire baobab tree just innocently just you know just there where it's been in the same position probably for the last 10 years and that happened the next minute I'm so glad I don't often watch the screen and I watch what people are doing Claire's looking she's ah, that baobab we're actually gonna have to go and find it it's probably a galago pan anyways she was amazing I told Claire at the end of the game she should have been man of the match and she should also apply to become the kicker for New Zealand. So it was spectacular. So anyways, that was, those were two of my favourite moments. There were a couple more, but we'll get into them a little bit later, seeing as though this is a safari show. But we, we haven't had found anything other than the birds. So while we continue to search for things, off we go to Ralph, who is now not looking for Ardwolf little ones, but has found giraffe. So back here on Amakala, these are moles that will actually appreciate this kind of weather that we're having. A little bit wet and uh, pretty cold, almost like winter is back. And that is the mountain reedbuck that we're seeing here. Very nice white bellies, very fluffy because they do tend to stay in mountainous regions as their name suggests and they do very well in those particular kind of environments which includes very cold weather which it is this morning i think it might warm up a little bit later just a couple of days ago it was actually very hot and then it's now changed to cold and wet a day thing used to yeah and the but these animals very adapted to this kind of environment. 
It does bode well that all the water holes and the dams, etc., will be filling up. And sorry if they have. Spot fitting in, and maybe the signal that's coming from us. Normally, it's very good here. This immersive program will give you an in depth understanding of the African bush in as little as seven days. You'll be guided by expert trainers who will lead you through the various ecosystems of Africa and teach you essential bush skills. Join Eco Training's 7 or 14 day EcoQuest course and you will receive 500 Rand off whether you sign up locally or internationally using this promo code. Further your journey as a true bush enthusiast today. Okay, there's, uh, there's no signs just yet of any um, lions. We know that yesterday they went east, but as I mentioned earlier this morning, there's nothing stopping them from changing direction at any time, especially when hunting. And we saw the condition of those lions yesterday. They're pretty hungry with empty bellies. And so last night they would have been very active, I think, in hunting. Even though it was full moon, I think uh, they would have tried. Whether they caught something or not, I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, when we see them again, what their condition is going to be like. But for the most part, uh, it seems a little bit quiet up in this northern part here. I think uh, as the drive progresses, we're going to head a little bit south because you're on the boundary of the, um, the storm over here. Well, there's not a storm, but there is lightning. We don't want to be too close to it. Roger, they don't drag kills very far. Usually, you know, where the scene of the crime is, that's usually sort of the area where the lions will be feeding. They don't really drag kills, unless they want to drag it under a bush, but that's just going to be a few meters. But it's interesting, I did have a sighting of a lion years ago at Swalu, in the Kalahari, where um, this lioness dragged it. Um, what, what, what kill was it? I can't remember. It was, I think it was an impala. She didn't really drag it, but she carried it, but the body was dragging on the ground. She carried it for about, about a kilometer, which is quite interesting. But usually, where the scene of the crime is, that is where they're going to eat the carcass. Let's mind your head, yeah. There we go, got some low-lying branches in the road. So you are going to notice a fence here. So as I say, we are, we are on the boundary now.
Mm. All right, so Taylor's doing some bird watching at the moment. So let's go take a look at what bird she's got. We are doing some birdie. Oh, never mind. No, we're not. That was a joke. We weren't. We're actually looking at the lichen that's growing on uh, this tree. You might be able to see it quite nicely. So the branches are dark grey and it's actually the light green that we're looking in. Thank goodness the birds flew away because now we can see it really nicely. Anyways, <laughs> it's going to be one of those mornings uh, again. Also, I i don't think you realise what Gert just did. You know you're a master of your craft when you're able to film over your shoulder. Unbelievable stuff, Kat. Unbelievable. Uh, I do just say, I said to Kat, I was, quite, I was quite sporty growing up and I loved playing all sports, especially contact sports, loved field hockey. And I think that I would have been a decent cricket player if it was a thing for uh, for women at school, but we didn't re couldn't really play cricket as a woman when I was in school. And the same thing goes with rugby obviously now those are two really big sports and I said to her if I played rugby what position does he think that I could play and he looked at me he made eye contact and he said the hooker I don't know I don't know if I'd be very good at being that position in the squad did you say they do in the scrum they've got a they have got to hook the ball out and you said that it can be used to be quite dangerous because people would knee people in the face well I'd be good at that because I've done that to myself and broken my own nose so actually maybe I would be great at that position so yeah maybe who knows um, I don't really know what we're gonna do now I'm just driving around Gabriel says I would be a prop what is the prop? No, not at all. Gabe doesn't know that I can run really fast. I'm not that fit at the moment, but I'm quick. Quick. I was a sprinter at school. But uh, so no, I don't I don't think I would have been a, a prop. Hookers have also got to be cheeky. Okay. Well then the I have got the job. I'm actually overqualified. X-ray, you said maybe I should be a kicker. I actually don't know. I've not really kicked very many rugby balls. I do have a rugby ball at home. We throw it around and we kick it a little bit every now and then. And then I, but I spend my entire time just going, Tucker, don't bite it. Don't bite it. That's my dog that I say that to, obviously. And then, uh, and then he normally bites it. And then that's the end of the game, unfortunately. Short and sweet. Uh, so yes, I think I would have really enjoyed rugby. We used to play, well touch rugby is a game that's played often when you're a guy that lodges in the car park. Lion tracks. Uh, I think they're lion tracks. Yes, they are lion tracks going down this way. Mm -hmm. But I think these are tracks that actually the guides were talking about that cross into Little Gowrie. But anyways, we'll just carry on down the road. Um, I played it. I've played cricket before against some of the Wild Earth members. I bowled Brent out. Never forget. Ever in my entire life. He was so disgusted. <laughs> it was a great moment. Uh, it's the small joys in life for me. Um, yeah, what fun. Eh? What fun. Anyways, I dabbled in lots and lots of different sports. Oh. Exchange now that I think about it, you're right, field hockey is not supposed to be a contact sport, but <laughs> one of my, ro my roles was to, so I played on the wing or in the center, and I like to play on the left, even though it's so weird, even though I'm right handed, I'm very, like I'm left dominant, like dominance, I run really well on the left side, and I, anyways, would go, and the goal was, for me to get the ball as quick as I could, it didn't matter how I got it there, into the the half circle, the D, whatever the scoring thing is called. I don't know if they changed the names of these things. I played a long time ago. 
and I would smash that ball so hard towards the goalkeeper normally in this direction just make them a little bit on the nervous side myself and my friend Sia we would both on the wing or she'd play center sometimes as well and we'd just get in there and that would normally terrify the defense so when they'd see Sierra and I running a few times people just stepped out the way I've, I've definitely shouldered a few people in hockey in my life but girls play dirty I had someone spill my foot and then push me over and then I I don't know did all sorts of things to my wrist anyways so yeah so definitely a rough player uh, if we go back to trying to relocate an Insumi so let's go see if he's managed to Sports, I love sports. Really and truly, I love sports. But the more challenging sports around here is trying to off road, making sure you don't get a flat tyre, and trying to look out for. Yeah, I copy you, you can go, I can maybe pass on a message, yeah. Okay, copy. I'll try and get a hold of them. Maybe they can copy it from where they are now. Um, yeah, I don't know if they, they copied my update either. We had, I had him to me here in the block between Impala, Zoe's and power lines. I'm just trying to relocate now. I don't know where she went to. I had him to me. Yo guys, this is hectic, man. Hectic, hectic, hectic. And poor and I, I'm not important, and I'm poor. I suggested that maybe we go to Impala Plains. Maybe she's moved out there already. Which I think is a brilliant call. The problem is trying to get there now is the issue. Yo, that was a big one. Okay, let's let them talk about their stuff there while we try and follow your Chipicus Papvilicus Black Monkey Orange. It's gonna be hectic here, guys. Yo, some of my highlights last night at the rugby was just sitting there waiting those last two minutes, waiting for the referee to end the game. Needless to say, as soon as I took the celebration video, Taylor wasn't too happy about it. <laughs> it was glorious. It was a game and a half, eh? But I need to look around a little bit harder. I don't know if we're going to get out in three yet. <laughs> this is a horrible block in Sumi. This really and truly is a horrible, horrible, horrible block. <laughs> If this is a Tandy slip, she can keep it. I never want a receipt from Tandy again like this. I also was hoping I can pick up on like a scent mark or something, just to like say, Gabe, you're on the right track here. Carry on, and you should come right. I'm gonna carry on scratching through here very slowly, trying to find this little cap. Are you scared of the dark? Bats? Spiders? Hold on to your broomsticks because this spooky season, we are creeping it real with our Halloween fireside chat. Join us as we get dressed up and debunk myths behind some of our seemingly scary safari friends. Catch the thrills and chills this Halloween. Bugs and hisses.
Oh, shame. Uh, Nadine is battling to count this morning. Don't worry, Nadine. Let's go this way. There's, uh, there's Leopard Dam. Let's go this way. Don't worry, Nadine. You can get yourself another cup of coffee in a few minutes, I'm sure. But yes, folks, uh, we'd just like to thank everybody who, yeah, you know, is uh, very loyal to us. And especially to those who um, have made donations over the last few months. Really appreciate it. If you would like to contribute, um, just know you can if you go onto the, um, the website and you click donate. Then you can, uh, you can do that. And uh, again, thank you to all of those that have already done so. Oh, I see Nadine's counting is getting a little bit better. Number one, Nadine. <laughs> All right, so Leopard Dam is straight ahead of us now. Let's just look around here. <laughs> Shame, I love, uh, I love the way Nadine chuckles along when we when we say something like that. Okay, Leopard Dam, what do you have for us this morning? Uh, there's no no movements just yet. We did see a hyena early this morning, not leopard dam, it in Glovo Dam. I think I was the only one that saw it because it bolted off. So we still haven't had any luck. I just followed the looks like four lions, two males and two female lions that walked all the way down Trindam Road and crossed into Little Gauri, which is a property that we cannot drive in. So, yeah, that's sad. And I'll check here. I think I'm gonna drive some roads that I have not driven in a very long time. And in hope that... What's... Get Gave something and I've been saying all morning I actually said it to him first in this morning when I saw him in the kitchen I said it's a wild dog day today I didn't hear what he had but maybe it is wild dogs it's the perfect morning uh, for them to be running around uh, so hopefully they do come back Ah, no, so it's not wild dogs. He's managed to manage to find and sue me again. So that's exciting. So we just sort of, uh, just sort of head around and just check these roads, check up on the tops of the trees. But I haven't seen too much activity uh, down this side. So I have no idea what we will actually be spending time with today. We'll just, just drive. Otherwise, I'll have to dazzle you with my personality, my wit and charm. Anyways, and... Speaking of Insumi, I won't keep you any longer. Off you go. Yo, guys, 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 it has been hectic. But the Tundi receipt does not work for Game Ranger Gabe. Insumi was here. I hope she doesn't, <laughs> doesn't slip away now again. There's just some big logs that Nsumi is walking around and we're getting over bigger and bigger logs now. Oh, no ways. There she goes down there. Quick view. Quick view. Ah. There she is there. I can just see her, yeah. The wind is not helping us at all. There she goes. I'm going to try and keep up with her still. She's on the hunt. She's on the hunt. 110% confirmed. I'll happily, happily confirm that. Okay, Paul, his idea was good. He moved us just far or just close enough towards Impala Road to get us to spot and see me. This is going to be hectic. Now I have to go through here. all of this nonsense. Yo. I just want to be very careful with what I'm driving over after Umpy's comment last night. I don't want to cause too much distraction. I don't want to influence it too much. There's a big branch there. That would have ended very badly. Okay. Thanks, Kelly. But I think Wendy's taking a bit of a hiding this morning. There she is right in front of us. Oh, you beautiful little girl. 
you are stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Yeah, so I've got a big fluffy tail like my ribs. Oh, yeah, just work, walking in the most horrible of places. <laughs> That one, literally the only tree between me and that little patch. Yeah, okay, from here, Paula, I don't know, I think Junction, for pretty much, I just go north here with Paula, towards Paula and Road. Uh, yeah, I'd recommend that. Um, she's just jiggering through here, looking to bumper something. She's now heading back east into this horrible block. Go a bit north and then just switch off to try and get your audio. We are, buddy, if we go past Black Monkey Orange uh, in a westerly direction, we're about, let's say, 50 meters north of that junction. So, on the 90s then? Yeah, sorry, I just looked now. I'm going to send you a pin. Follow the pin. Guys, this is hectic. Thanks, Chris. That was a whole bunch of work. That was in freaking sane. At one point, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of gave up hope just because <laughs> we were driving around looking and looking and looking and looking. And we weren't too sure, but in poor nail, but he said, let's go this way. Okay. I'm not going to let her get out of my sight again, because she's a very, very sneaky little one. Okay. This is going to be very interesting in Paul. Hold on tight, chap. There are a lot of bumps here. The elephants have been super busy. Vera, she is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Somewhere there. Yay. Holy smokes. Wait. Wait, hold on. There she goes over there. Yo, we. <laughs> Boy, you okay back there, man? <laughs> fun times, fun times. Oh, maybe there might be a log here. No, are we good? Just walking there, she is there. She's behind that thick stuff over there. I'm gonna try and move a little bit more forward for us. Yeah, yo, stop, stop, stop. Buddy, you just passed me. You reverse a little bit and then come north. I just saw your car. Yo. Hey, then they just arrive and they take the siding after all our hard work. But I want her to catch something and take it up a tree. And you know, let me tell you something to me if you you know if you're stuck with me, I had a, a beautiful little little steen book sitting off there. Yo. She's just over here. Uh, she's gonna pop out in front of the car now. I think I can see some rosettes. Rosettes are there now. No. Yeah, maybe I see rosettes. I don't see rosettes. I see rosettes. <laughs> there you are.
Thanks, Katie Cat. Yeah, there's some other work for this one. You need to head west, Dion. West. I think maybe turn off your mover and then listen to me. I'm gonna follow her again and then maybe you can listen to the branches. But she's going back like literally on Balanati's where I told you to stop and turn. She's just here now. You copy my mover. What if you could explore the world from an entirely new perspective? Flying a real drone live without leaving home. This is Nature Eye. Discover our planet's landscapes with a personal guide and a powerful camera. Every flight helps conserve the locations you visit. Book your adventure with Nature Eye. Okay, copy. I'm going to loop around towards you now then. Yo! <laughs> Guys, Insumi is giving us a proper run around. I need to get through all this horrible stuff. She's going into from horrible block to horrible block. I was hoping she's going to give us a little bit of a break. But she is most definitely on the hunt. With this, she's definitely looking for something to eat. Okay, I think we're gonna stop here. Just watch out, oh, I think. Oh yeah, she is right here. Yeah. yeah, she is right here. Yeah. Wow, that was a nice little walk by right in front of the car. It's, it's, I love watching a leopard hunt. Walk, walk, stop. Head up, shoulders pull back. Looking for something, listening. 
And Farad is also in, they're busy sitting down, they've got a bit of a full belly and like there's a bird hopping on a branch, a branch above them. I don't know if you've ever seen a domestic cat when like they want to get something with the con and they start doing that little clicking sound. And then they do that weird thing with the whiskers moving. <laughs> Leopards do it as well and it's actually quite funny to see. Okay, and boy, you ready? Yeah. Oh, can I hold it there actually? How does that look? She's on the branch looking back at us. Oh. Yo. Yo, this is intense. This is super intense. The elephants have definitely been doing a really good job in <laughs> maintaining the landscapes here. Let me tell you something. Yo, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. And guys, this little machine is taking us places. Wendy is a little legend. No worries, Ansi. My absolute pleasure. I think we're gonna try and do this again. Okay, we've got a vehicle watching her, which is cool. It makes my life a little bit easier. So now I just need to follow a game trail and then get around and get back in front. But while doing this, we also need to be very careful that we obviously don't drive into a ditch. There she is to your left and pull. Ah, uh, stop and see me. And see me. Uh. Pop out over there. I love it. She's on the lookout. The birds are busy calling. They have spotted her. <sighs> How's your quads? Are they getting a good workout today? <laughs> yeah. Okay. When you get around here, this is going to be very interesting. Sumi, you are going that way, my dear. Okay. Okay, let's do it like this. No. Oh. Big stumpies, need to watch out for that. There's a gap over there. Elephants doing the most still, pulling out these large fruited bush willows to get to the roots and the cambium layer. Yo, if she bolts off now, we're gonna lose her. If she pulls one of those little hunting tricks again, she's gone. I can see her in the distance, yeah. Uh, big stumps, big, big stumps. Uh, yeah, there she is there, walking this way. Let's give it a bash, guys. We still got it. I hope that car's got it. And I will be honest now, if we do lose it, I think it's gonna be game over for us. I think it's gonna be game over. Okay, watch out, Champo. I think we're gonna get a good visual here somewhere. Okay, there she is there, walking, she's doing the weirdest little loops here and I don't understand. Maybe she knows if she walks like this while we're going this way, there's a good chance that we might flush something out towards her. Okay, you ready? Okay. Yeah, we can get her in front of us here, I'm sure. Big stump there. I think she has to be somewhere there in front of us. <sighs> yeah. Yo, guys, I do apologize. We do try and train our leopards a little bit better in the area to walk in the open areas or in front of the car the whole time. It's just this time, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm not too sure what happened. Yeah, it's standing by. Okay, copy. I'm gonna hang ten. Y'all got it. Take you out of there. Screenshots, guys, screenshots. Ah. 
That would have been the one for a screenshot. That really would have been one for a screenshot. Yo. Thanks, Nadine, but I want I want good quality, full frame, 48 megapixels, zoom in, see the whiskers, see the tick on the eyelids. That's what we're after here. That photographic opportunity. Huh. Huh. I think Kimpo is doing a beautiful job this morning. And she's hunting. I want to see the whole thing take, like, I want to see in front. I don't want to be on her. I don't want to be... I don't want to be rashing the animal, and I understand she's very comfortable with vehicles. It's not a reason to go and drive on top of her tail. Okay. Nisumi, are you going to sit there for like two minutes so I can get closer, or are you walking off again? We are about to start walking in. Three. Uh, didn't give me time to count down. There is a beautiful termite mound in front of us, and hopefully, well, that hot 110%, and that's why I'm trying to keep my distance between her and I. And I think that's why it's so tricky to get a good visual, is because if I don't do big loops, anything close to her, or if we had to drive on her, we'd be attracting attention directly to her. And she's gonna, oh, she literally stopped. I thought she was gonna come pop out here. She stopped and walked around there. Um, but yes, I am highly concerned about that. I am extremely concerned about that. I can see her, she's just sitting there behind the thick stuff. But very good question. And this is why I'm trying to keep my distance without obviously completely ruining the sighting and not getting a view on her. I'd like to come park off here and see if she doesn't pop out on top of the termite mound. Well done, Impo. He's gonna come up the termite mound, I'm sure. On top of the termite mound. There we are. She is too cute. Look at that low profile. Ears all over the place, tucked down on the other side of the termite mound where she came from. And oh, <laughs> she is absolutely beautiful. B E A, beautiful. Dorothy Miller, 110%. Ooh. All morning. A call that she made. Yo! Guys, we're gonna have to move now because she's moving very quickly. She's moving extremely quickly now. Yo! She might have spotted something. I don't know. Something or someone. But that was very, very quick. And the call that. Oh, very strange. Watch out, I'm poor. I'm sorry if I slap you with something, my man. I just know it's because I love you. Yo. Negative, don't have her. I'm just following up on where I lost. So I go. Yo. Ooh. Yo. We are lucky. Okay, hold on, I'm poor. Badger. Okay guys, we are stuck. <laughs> that was a big archwell call and we got <laughs> Wendy halfway into it. I'm not going to try my luck. I'm going to have to wait for this chap to come pull me out. <laughs> yeah, we are pinned pinned. Go, go, don't worry. Yeah, Badger, Art Falk Hall. Carry on down there.
Eco Training's Professional Field Guide course can make your dreams a reality. This comprehensive program comprises five months of theoretical and practical training in the African bush with highly qualified instructors in multiple locations. Enroll today and receive 5,000 Rand off using the promo code. If you've just finished school or tertiary education and you want to head into the wild, Eco Training's Professional Field Guide course is for you. Am I going to have to remove my crown as the Marshmallow Queen and place it on top of Gabriel's head? I've also sent Max, who is uh, our technical genius at Sigurtha. So I sent him a message saying, do not go and pull if he needs rescuing. It will kill him. It will kill him if I have to come up again. Ah, uh, it would be very funny. Anyways, we're just we're actually on Chatua Chatua at the moment, and I'm just having a look around. If there's anything here, I thought maybe with the a few lights, basically just to the right of me, a few hundred meters, maybe you know, veer off to the southeast, and then we'd be able to see them. But I haven't had any luck just yet. It's probably still thinking. But why not? Sometimes you get really lucky on Chitwa and these things. It sounds like there's quite a few guides, but far away. <laughs> Gabe says he only needs 10 minutes. He'll get unstuck himself. Let's start the clocks, everybody. Sounds like I'm on master F now. So at 22 minutes past 7, if Gabriel's not gonna go and rescue him so excited I can't wait Maybe Max should take a spoon so <gasps> yes that's a good idea a teaspoon though not a spoon yeah I don't even think there's a spade in that car so it's gonna be difficult to to dig yourself out it's always gosh it's it's a horrible thing to get stuck in an aardvark burrow. Not always easy to get out of. What tracks are those? I don't know. Are those hyena tracks, cat? I also looked at them like that. Okay, let me get out. 
they look though I, I at first porcupine yeah I was also I was also kind of having a look going he what is that yeah it does look very much like a porcu porcupine track it's gonna be difficult to see because uh, there has been some rain that's fallen on top of the track which is making it really difficult to see perfectly but anyways we'll have a look and see if we can find any other interesting tracks in the meantime off you go to Andrew who's not too far away from us Thank you, Taylor. Yeah, we've uh, found this elephant bull that we spotted from a great distance away. And we're just going to watch a moment and see where he's going to go. But shame, this elephant seems to be hunkering in the bushes there. Doesn't want to get too cold in this wind. Shame. That's the one thing about elephants, they do get cold. Um, so as you can see, they don't have, uh, they don't have too much body fur. Um, or they don't have any body fur. So they do lose heat very quickly. And uh, so they go into the bushes and they just use the, the bushes as almost like a boma just to try and stay warm. So he's just gone behind that tree now. Can we move forward? Yeah. Yeah, we've got a fence line that's going to block us over here. So let's, uh, let's carry on on our bumble and see what else we can find along the way. Now remember that uh, Prydens is open to the great, Greater Kruger National Park. Just on this western side it is fenced uh, because there is a railway track over here. And uh, so you can't have uh, too much activity of wildlife going over that, tra that train track. That's a, that's a problem. So that's why it's fenced up. But towards the east, towards the north, it's all open. Yeah, we might get a view even here. All right, so we might just have a good view here. Stop there, Cameron. Okay, let's stop over here. Yeah, I'd just like to mention that we are live and interactive. Many of you have sent uh, questions and comments and suggestions, etc. But if you'd like to, remember you can register yourself on the website so that you can actually ask us questions. And then also, if you go into YouTube, you can subscribe so that you can get notifications on all the cool things we're seeing. And then also, if you go into the Twitter page, you can uh, send messages that way and statements and so on using the hashtag wild earth lens needs a little bit of a wipe there we go yeah quite a nice ball this eh? quite big it's got a decent sized tusks as well just feeding on some of the grasses over here there he goes Shame. I'm really hoping because uh, uh, Cameron's gonna be with us here at uh, eco training until the 7th or the 8th or something like that um, and I'm hoping that Ezelwini is gonna come out this way so I can at least show it to him um, he's heard about him but hasn't seen him and many of you probably haven't seen him as well so try and imagine those tusks that you're seeing there times it by one two by four times and then that is Ezelwini's tusks they are so large those tusks and they are so thick he's definitely got very strong genetics and in a good few years 20 30 years from now with all the females that he's been mating with um, and passing on his genetics he probably gonna be some very large tuskers in the near or not in the near future but in the future but that's it the tusk growth is uh, is definitely influenced mainly by genetics of the animal look at that picking up lots and lots of green grass here and this is a good uh, a good time just to talk about the fact that with elephants a lot of their diet consists of grass we can see this now they really enjoy green green grass he picks it off fluffs out fluffs it out a bit trying to get some of the grit off of it some of the substrate that might still be attached to the 
to the roots of the grass as it pulls it out and often you find that they shake it and then put it back into the or put it into the mouth and eat it just to keep the teeth in good condition they don't want to wear down their teeth there's a nice sickle bush there in the, the foreground beautiful I've actually seen elephants rinsing off vegetation in water make it nice and clean before they eat it He's got to love their trunks. Eh? Their trunks almost reminds me of a caterpillar. When you think about the um, the segments within the trunk. There we go. Beautiful ball this. Shame. This is the, the first elephant we've seen today. All right, I wonder how Gabe is getting along and if he's still stuck in his vehicle or if Mr. Muscles and Paul managed to drag him out. But let's go and take a look and see what's happening there. Well, guys, that was super interesting. Super interesting. It's probably the deepest I've sunk a Land Rover. We drove, I don't know how the front wheel went over, but the back wheel got caught in an art vark hole. So, yeah. And that was record breaking time. I'll, I'll try and put up a video a little bit later. It was intense. It was super, super intense. And my name is uh, Gabriel Harmon, not Taylor McCurdy. So I don't even get pulled out by anyone. You've got to make your own way out. So yeah. We were stuck, but not stuck, stuck. Now, Tumi is literally on the boundary here between us and the west, the Arethusa Blocks and Bambili area. And she's just in a little thicket there. I think she's eventually sat down. I'd, I'd love to move forward, but it does look like she's on a game path and I don't want to block her off. And I also don't want to go and run around and park in between a whole bunch of cars now. That would not be the right thing to do. We've got ox peckers on top of us. That's what you're busy hearing. Come on, it seems pop out for us. I think she's literally having a little cat nap there. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, we've got nothing. <laughs> no, Wendy's been legendary. She's been looking after me super well. Oh, I can see her there. I just don't know if you're going to be able to see her there. Oh gosh, she's flat, 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 flat. We're going to have to go around, I reckon. I'm going to have to go all the way back around. Let's see. Maybe we can make something work for you guys. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But knowing my luck, as soon as I get there and into position, she's going to get up and start walking again. Let's have a look. Yo, Wendy. Good job, girl. Good job. It was a bit scary. I thought... Yeah. <laughs> Even in Paul was like... Yeah. But at least I didn't pull a Tristan and fall out of the car. Well, that's what Paul said. Luckily, you didn't fall out of the car like Tristan. So, yeah. <laughs> very, very lucky that didn't happen. It was extremely close. Okay. So that car is there, that means <laughs> that branch gave me a good smack. Yeah, I've got a spot for you here in port. You're going to have to shoot in quite tight on her, let me know if you're okay there. Stop. Reverse a bit. So do my secret sign language, butterfly, backwards, forwards, always over here, yeah, okay. It's the secret language of guides. Well, there it is eventually. She's sitting down. This is what we've worked our butts off for the past hour by the looks of it, yeah. 
<laughs> Pimple. Yeah, almost. I think she's just giving herself a little bit of a bath before she carries on. She's not flat flat yet. A flat flat cat you know is a flat cat because they're literally flat like a rug. She's busy, she's grooming. Probably getting rid of all the dirt that she picked up while she was busy marching around. <laughs> and my hands are all full of mud and a whole bunch. Oh, not too bad. Actually not bad at all. Oh, wow. And Simi, it's so nice to meet you, girl. Very nice to meet you. Wow. I just hope you catch something at the tree and have a bit of a feast. Look at that. And you know why we're seeing something today? Because again, no camera. No camera. Simi is worth every minute. Yeah, I agree. But I was secretly hoping it was Shadulu's little one. The way that she was tucked up, I was like, yeah, this is this could be Shadulu's cup. And I was getting so excited. I was like, oh, maybe Shadulu's around. But do you know what? I did have a new leopard on the list and it brings it up to like 44 or something or 43 different leopards in the Sabi Sands. Super cool. Super, super, super cool. Oh, I'm so full with a whole bunch of rubbish from trees. I'm trying to take my jersey off quietly without causing too much of a stir there with the good old Ntsumi. Thanks Max for the jacket, I really appreciate that. Kept me a lot drier than what I thought I was going to be earlier this morning. Absolutely spectacular. <laughs> oh, some cat yoga, early morning stretches, good stuff. Mm. That's very impressive. The leg behind the head, I can also do that. <laughs> Here. She's looking a bit, a bit better now. Decided to face us for a change. I don't know if that means we're going to get to see her beautiful face a little bit more, or if she's just decided she's not going to cross the main road. So she must have been here for quite a while then, eh? From Rex and maybe a day after Rex, and I think she's been here for about two days. Okay, guys. Let you enjoy. Welcome to Destination Safari's Wild Earth Travel Show that showcases safari lodges. On today's episode, we are exploring Amakala's Bush Lodge. This is a luxury five star bush tented camp, luxury suites look onto an open wildlife watering hole.
millipede. What have you stopped to do? Are you feasting on something? It's a bit difficult to see. But maybe he has some, found some kind of something to, to eat on, or it's just investigating around it. Catherine, you said, yay, a shongo lolo. They are really funny. This is quite a big one. We've been seeing some enormous millipedes at the moment. Some of the biggest I've ever seen in my entire life. So it is a lot of fun to see them. I feel like this is the first insect that... Well, not insect, but you know what I mean. Like, that children are introduced to in South Africa. Because you usually see them all the time, and it's such a fun word to say, shongololo, because that's obviously what we call them. And they're, you know, just so fascinating to watch and slow. I find if things are too quick when you're, you're young, you kind of lose interest, but you can just sit and admire them. And like I said, the legs are mesmerizing, you watch your antenna move around all the time, trying to help guide where it needs to go. Well, there we are. Now we can call it a flat cat. I think she had a bath time. I think now she's going to rest a little bit. Firstly, I'm not hoping she does. I'm hoping she gets up and stays on Juma and tries and catches a spinny, a little stian book or a taker. Now we've just got a whole bunch of rosettes melting into the grass. Mm. What do you do, eh? It was a stressful morning for her, just as it was for us. <laughs> oh, no. That was intense. That camouflage works so well. You've got a ladybug, Laura Moore, very, very cool watching her groom. You've got a little ladybug. He was super excited to be here, just like we are. Hey, very, very lucky. Very, very cool. I think give it about 30 minutes. She'll probably get up and start moving around again. more than likely not right away it's going to take some time and then i think we will be on the move yet again hopefully guys as we said chat we will keep an eye on Sumi and see what happens but we're not going to keep you for you here for too long with a flat cat so i'm going to send you down to rolf in amakala Well, yes, indeed. We are looking out over the plains here on the northern territories here in Amakala, and uh, we, we're quite nice and close to these mountain zebra, but they've decided, as per usual, to walk off and away from us. Um, you can just see them there as they walk through the thickets, and off in the distance as well, there's some black wildebeest. Just there, you can see at the top of your screen, waving their lovely white tails. And this is also the area where we often do see those blue cranes. I wonder if they may be near to that pan. Off there in the distance. Lovely spot this, and it's nice that the sun has come out, and it's uh, drying things up. And of course we do know that the blue cranes are the national bird of South Africa who are now once again the world champs. But well the wild dove don't care. 
There were two of them, now there are none. So with it warming up nicely now as well, we can expect to probably see a bit more of the likes of reptiles out on the road and uh, just being a bit more active because with a couple of days being very cold and wet, there would have been uh, very little activity and now with the sun coming out, there'll be lots more of them moving around. So we've got to be careful as well when we drive because here you have the angela tortoise and they, they, even the adults quite serious. you often see them in the roads especially as soon as it gets hot then you see them lots of them being active and you just got to be careful that you don't drive over them so we've got to keep our eyes peeled for snakes and tortoises in the road So vines, it is a beautiful spot here on Amakara. It's absolutely precious. Um, and it does give you that kind of Mara vibes. Masai Mara in particular. It's um, quite a similar looking landscape that we have here to the Mara. Kind of uh, open plains and then sort of dotted thickets around. Though they don't get to see the same animals. Not really black wildebeest. There'll be lots more uh, blue wildebeest and zebra and obviously all the gazelles as well. Same but different. Lovely spot here though. And now the birds starting to call as well as this dawn chorus. Hearing lots of the Rufus Nape larks, as we call him, the bicycle pump bird. It was shweep, 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 shweep. Just listening out for what else I can hear. I think there's a Cape Scrub robber. Step into a world of discovery as you join Eco Training's renowned courses in the heart of Kenya's Masai Mara. These courses are the perfect way to gain a deep understanding of the African bush, even if you have limited time. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to experience the wild in a meaningful and life-changing way. Enroll today and embark on a transformative journey with Eco Training in Kenya's Masai Mara, the leading force in conservation education.
Okay, so what is happening on this side? I just want to drive a little bit to the side of the road just so I can see some tracks. Okay, it sounds like there's a little bit of a, a synchronization problem here with the audio. Sorry about that, folks. I'm sure that uh, tech, technical support will sort it out very, very soon. But yeah, lots and lots of broken trees out here. Yo, elephants have had a proper go at this area over the last, uh, yeah, last while. Seeing some really big knob thorns. And there's one, uh, one tree in particular that's uh, quite interesting that uh, it's been split in half. It's a weeping bourbine. And uh, let me tell you, it is not a small one. It is a ginormous one. It's literally split in half. Let's go down this way. Yeah, lots of little sneaky roads over here. This is a, a more well-established road, but there are quite a few two-track roads out here, which are quite, quite uh, hidden roads. You have to know where they are. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. Sleepy kitty, happy kitty, purr, purr, purr. Usually the song I sing when I, it's a bit quiet in the bush, I do believe it brings in, brings in some magic. So we have repositioned slightly. We've got this little bundle rolled up in the tall stuff, having a bit of a cat nap. We've been here for about 15 or so minutes so I expect in the next 10 to 20 minutes she's gonna start grooming herself again for about a minute or so get up and carry on doing what she was doing before she started to rest <laughs> oh happy happy birthday from all of us at Wild Earth I hope you have a magical day and an even better Sunday and I'm so glad that Nsumi could be your birthday present today. Birthday energy on a game drive on a safari. One of the most powerful magics you'll ever get. Better than beginner's luck. Very, very, very cool. Super cool. The ears are, remind me of her mom for sure. For sure. And she looks... Like she's not really having a proper nap. It looks like she's just pretending to sleep so all the cars move off. It's quite clever. I think they know. If we lie down and pretend to sleep, the cars are not going to stay because they want to see us doing something. I'm just going to quickly, guys, I might block my audio by accident. I just need to put my, my binos to my face. Nice little view. She's sticking out like I saw them with this light today. She's a lot more pale than what I thought. And she's small, eh? She's very, very small. Yeah. I remember this story now. I do remember this story. There was quite a big debacle about this back last year. When was it? June last year. There's a there's a picture of her. Putting a paw on a car. I'm not going to mention which car it was, but yeah, it was quite hectic. And it sparked a bit of a, an uproar amongst guides and owners about how are we treating these animals and what are we allowing them to get away with? Because this isn't instinctive behavior this is learned behavior not normal not natural at all and that's where we play our role as human beings home hey? we need to decide and we need to decide a battle is flying above us pretty cool There are. I'm still here, I don't get excited. Yeah, Peter, she's listening to every word. <laughs> she's like, oh, come on, Gabe, get out of here. I'm not going anywhere, girl. 
You made me work hard for this sighting. I think we're alone now. It doesn't seem to be anyone around. That's the first song that popped into my head. I don't know why I'm just... I'm in a very song songbird mood today. <laughs> I'm just having these melodies pop in and out. I wonder what Taylor's doing. Was the millipede doing anything, Nadine? Or... Because, I mean, last time in Porn I found a millipede, they were mating. First time in my life I'd seen that. That was too cool. How cool it be if Taylor's following up on a, a male leopard? How cool it be if it is Mariba? Maribs. Mariba. Maribai. Bye. That would be cool. I haven't seen the Duke properly. Last time Paul and I had him, remember when he was looking at those Impala? And Cedric helped us out there. Oh, she is. Girl, I'm not falling for your tricks. I want you to know that. I know you are pretending to sleep now. You know, like when you walk up and or you try and get a child to do something, they're pretending they're sleeping, and they just keep their eyes closed and keep their eyes closed. I watched this video where I think a family had come back from a vacation, and uh, the child was sleeping in the back. <laughs> so <laughs> the parents said, "Well." You know, if you pull the arm out and the arm stays straight, they're really sleeping. And the dad pulls the kid's arms out and <laughs> she leaves him standing straight. Just to prove that she's sleeping. Oh, I don't know if it's the same with leopards. I don't know if you pull the foot and if the foot stays out, they're really truly sleeping. Or if they start growling at you. What I do know though, she's a small girl. She's a very cute girl. And I am enjoying my time with her. Big eyes, very big eyes. But it is to remind me of Kachava. <laughs> That's the next lady for a shave coming in now. You're up to about 96 kilometers per hour. I'm not too sure what that would be in miles. Um, like I keep saying, I'm not a mathematician, I'm a game ranger. And I don't have any reception to try and Google that. Maybe Nadine can help us with what 96 kilometers per hour is in miles per hour. Or maybe someone in the comments can do the quick conversion for us. Oh, there, here comes the next lady for a shave. Now oh, she's awake again. Yeah, and I see what you're saying. She definitely looks very much like her mother. Very much like her mother. Very, very, very cool. Those ears. Those ears. They look like little boomerangs. They look like little boomerangs. Yeah, well, 36 miles per hour. Thank you so, so much for that. I wouldn't be able to work that out. I definitely wouldn't be able to work that out. 36 miles per hour, 96. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's a very difficult metric system to use with a different measuring. Yeah. Imperial. Yeah. No, 90, 96 kilometers per hour. They run 96 kilometers per hour in a full charge, a full animal slapping race. They'll pick it up. Yeah, I also thought that sounded a bit low, and I'm definitely not a, math a mathematician. <laughs> Charlotte, you did indeed. You did indeed. 
you know, I can sing, it doesn't mean it's any good. But I'm glad you enjoyed the rhythms of the morning. And this, my African dream. I wish I could hit the high notes of that song. That's probably one of my favorite songs as well. And Paul is a bit of a, what do we, you, what do you call a guy with a deep voice? My son, Paul, sings, he sings like an angel. Hey, what? Head up. Yes, yeah, to me. Come on. Big yawn now. Give us a yawn. Yawn. No. I'm just rolling around. I wonder what Taylor and Andrew are up to. Hmm. I wonder what Taylor, Rolf, and Andrew are up to. Keep on forgetting about Rolf. And also, happy belated birthday to Stephen. Sorry, Stephen. I didn't send you a message, but happy belated birthday. It's time to tap into your owl-like wisdom and elephant-like memory. Gear up for a month of Animal Quizmania this November. Teams will pit against each other every Saturday for some good old-fashioned interactive fun on The Sunset Show. To enter, form a team of at least two people, fill out the form on our website and name your team. Come along and put yourself and your challenges to the test. Wild Earth, bringing the fun to the safari. We've had no luck. I scoured Chitwa in hope for anything else but a millipede, but that's all we really got, unfortunately. So we're we're back on a boundary road now, heading sort of west. So I thought, let me just come and drive along this road between Little Gowry on my left and Juma on my right. And who knows, maybe the male leopard and, and Gobba's one male leopard will actually cross the way quite funny because the area that he is moving through this morning was actually where they found tortoise pan yesterday afternoon so he better be very careful I don't know where tortoise pan has gone though but I suspect he probably moved quite a bit so we'll just keep checking there's been a lot of movement of vehicles though up and down this road so everyone has kind of pinpointed which animals have crossed where and then I just bumped into one of the Incoral guides and he said that there's quite a 
large amount of lion tracks that actually come out from Little Gauri, not too far ahead of us, and all the tracks kind of cut through, but then they head just through this sort of southeastern section of Juma and then cross out on uh, one of the, the main eastern boundaries. So he thinks that it might be the Inkuhuma pride of lions that kind of came from the western side and then uh, and then moved out. He also said that the black dam males are on Hofmans, which is another property just over there, and that they might come this way. KKG, I haven't had any, uh, or heard any news rather, of the Talamati Breakaway Pride. I had to look for them. I thought maybe they would go towards Bufalsok Dam, but I didn't see any tracks. So either they're still on Juma somewhere, uh, in one of those big blocks, I haven't driven around Galago shortcuts, but the likelihood is that they've also just crossed back north out of uh, out of our traverse and in and into Bufalsuk itself. So, so that's a possibility. It's obviously just nice now that the it's lightened up a little bit because earlier this morning it was so difficult to actually find tracks. I was walking around with my torch. I thought I was like I can see some footprints here, but they're disturbed with the rain. Um, so, so yeah, it's not always it's not always easy, but because it's so cool, animals could most certainly still be on the move. Although we know they like to move around whenever they want to. But I just thought we'd just come and have a little scratch around here. Lots of elephant tracks, but none from today. A lot of them look like they were maybe from yesterday afternoon. <laughs> so I have to share this. Nadine's directing today, and she says that Shreyas, she goes Shreyas says that she would. It would be really nice to see that other leopard today. So it's not an easy one, uh, a name to kind of wrap your tongue around, Ngobo's one. Uh, I remember the first time that I heard it too, I was like, excuse me, pardon? The same thing with Nzenga males, trying to spell that. I was like, sure, I know there's an N and a D and probably an H somewhere, but I'm not quite sure whereabouts they go. So it does become quite tricky to pronounce some of these names. I remember when Tlalamba was given her name, that was a difficult one for people to say as well uh, you just just with a bit of practice you get kind of used to it but the most elaborate animal names seem to all come from Mala Mala because there's a couple of others that I've just gone nope I can't call them that I'm gonna have to give them another name obviously I won't I'll just learn how to do it so I'm just checking I thought maybe if we do find all those lion tracks we can have a look at them but it's also quite possible with the amount of traffic of people going up and down, heading to the far west and, and sort of scouring this property to the left, looking for all of the animals that we might not see many of the tracks anymore. Or because I was just talking, I just missed them. Otherwise it's quiet. Just, Sorry Nadine, please can I have that again? It just broke up too much. Ah, so babe, you're wondering how deep the sandy layer is on the road. It's not deep at all. In fact, uh, the thickest parts are kind of just on the edges that you can see, but otherwise it's compacted and then normally this sort of middle section where people will obviously because you don't really just drive on one side of the road they're quite narrow so for the most part people will drive in the middle of them and with no high speed oncoming traffic where well, you shouldn't really encounter anything like that in a game reserve then this middle piece normally gets a bit of a heap of sand too but this road has got a lot of corrugations and so these little bumps like rills like, like you can see look I'm going over them now bounce 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 so then we tend to drive on the roads just like ringneck doves walk like this just trying to find the smoothest part anyways while we try and uh, 
navigate the bumpy roads off you go to Gabe. His patience was paid off and Insumi is up and on the move. Okay, I'm just waiting to see. It looked like she was going to give this guy the tandy slip. Yeah, let's turn around. Here we go, Paul. Yeah, here we go. Round three. Round three. Hopefully this time she'll catch something for us. Come on, Wendy. No, no. They need to get stuck. The car needs to start first. Okay. Yo, Wendy, you champion. But now I need some more magic one more time. She did a cool hop there through the, the trees over here, to be honest with you. Kind of took us by surprise. Is she going up to a termite mound? Yes, it looks like she might climb up onto a termite mound. This is what we've been waiting for, folks. Get on top of it and see me. Ching chikarambi, ching chikarambi, ching chikarambi ra. Ching chikarambi, ching chikarambi, ching chikarambi ra. Let's have a look. This guy's gonna go all the way around it. Okay, come. Round, 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 round. Karen going. There she is. Oh, you can't see her. She's just over there. There she is there. Nicholas, you gotta be kidding me. up there. We're not going to see anything on the termite mound and she looks absolutely radiant. Hello beautiful girl. <laughs> Wendy is squeaking busy speaking to Insumi saying wait there little cat I'm going to come around. Okay I think through not this one the next one we should come right. As long as Insumi stays there for a couple more seconds, I'm gonna be a happy chappy. Yes, she's looking good, she's looking fine. I just wanna park off on this side so I don't block her little game path. Cause I can see she's walking on this game path here. I think we might get a sweet little walk by over here. How's that, Paul? Now that is beautiful. Yeah, super cool. Super duper cool. I think she's gonna come and walk. As long as no other car comes in. Blocks her off or blocks this game path. We should be fine. So we're like two years old basically. Guys, thank you so much for the questions and comments you have sent through already. It means the world to me, you know, I love, I love getting those things, especially the questions. So please let us know what you're thinking, let us know what you're feeling, what do, would you like to talk about, would you like me to leave here, would you like Taylor to find something, would you like Andrew to do something. Maybe, I think, we should ask um, Taylor to do the hacker for us. Because, you know, New Zealand lost and she was talking a big game. I think definitely a haka just to celebrate the battle that New Zealand brought to South Africa. That would be some, and it has to be live, can't be recorded. Definitely, okay, guys, we are getting swamped by the people, yeah. So I'm just gonna keep it a little bit quiet. Uh, you can hear the roar of the engines. We obviously picked the right side to view this little girl, and I think she's just gonna get up and probably walk off in the opposite direction now because we are closing off this whole side. I just wanna say I called it. I just wanna say I called it. All the guides are cussing now because <laughs> she's walking the other way. <laughs> I'm just gonna hang 10 here. We're gonna wait for everyone to go around and then we will join. <laughs> 
All of them. All of them. She's out of eyesight now. Oh, <laughs> that was brilliant. As she gets up and walks off. Oh, come on. What's going on here? That was perfect. But I can, I can most definitely, definitely relate. I've been there one too many times, to be honest with you. And she trotted off, making it, opening the gap between us and her. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, she's got her dad's black ears. Okay. <laughs> that sounded like me earlier. Um, there she is there, and Paul, I don't know, how's, uh, yeah. Oh, let's wait a second, I wonder if she's going to duke them again. Because they're all moving directly towards her, yeah, through that little branch. Let me know if I can move a little bit forwards or backwards for you. She, nah, she's walking out to the road, yeah. Okay, watch out for this branch and pull. <coughs> Big muscles. <laughs> Been jimming to try and catch up with him poor in size and strength. And so far it's working. I thought she was gonna pop out over here now, to be honest with you. Yeah, there she goes in front of that one car. Hold on. Once she crosses over, folks, you know what that means. No more following. Oh. There she goes. Well, guys, that's the end of our time with Insumi as she crosses over into Arethusa Safari Lodge property. We will sit here and watch the other vehicles go in. And just be so glad that we got to spend the amount of time we did and the sightings we had with her. Absolutely stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Wow. And Paul, 10 out of 10 this morning, huh? We had it all. We had the highs. We had the lows. It was absolutely amazing. I'm going to send you over to Taylor. Let's see what other invertebrates she's been able to find. Should be quite exciting, and don't forget to ask her to do the hacker for us. Naturally, I've managed to find dwarf mongpoos. We've changed the names from mong mongoose to mongpoos, um, and it was because they were frolicking about in a rhino midden, but they're not doing that anymore. They've now moved off, which is sad, so they can go back to being dwarf mongoose. Oh, wait, there's one in the dung. No! Come back. See, that's great in there. They'd be able to dig out all sorts of things. But anyways, they don't want to stick around. Uh, so it was just a small... Oh no, hang on, there's one. Here it comes. I'll pretend that I'm not looking at it. Left, right, left, right. Yes, everyone else is leaving. And they're probably leaving because of us. But if you want to stay there, that's not a problem. I don't think it was uh, too long ago that the dwarf mongoose woke up. Having a late morning start. There's been a couple of them that have uh, run across the road. Not that many though, so it might not be a huge colony. There's a few more just running through the grass. We'll see if they head in kind of the same direction or if they, you know, it looks like they might cross the road a bit higher up. Bounce, bounce, off it goes. <laughs> they are so sweet. Uh, so funny. I wish they would have stuck around for a little bit longer. Meow. Off they go. Okay. Maybe we'll see them again. We'll see you go up around the bend. <laughs> Hello. I feel like it's been so ages since I've said your name. You said, oh my, dwarf mongoose with Taylor. What an unusual sight. I feel like they're my go-to animal. 
I'm able to conjure them up from, I don't even know, from the depths of the termite mounds. But they're not staying, just stay there. Why are you so scared? Oh, oh my goodness. European bee eaters. Let's see if they're gonna turn. Sorry, I've parked the, well, I'm hoping the wind's gonna blow them in this direction. You can't see much now. Yeah, it's difficult. They're just flying off to the right. I don't think you're gonna be able to hear them. But there is nothing else that sounds like European rollers. There's so many, not, why do I keep saying rollers, bee eaters, European bee eaters? There's so many of them. Wow, if they go there, they've just flown quite far away, but I don't even know where they came from. Well, obviously, Europe. Europe. <laughs> Obvious. Okay, let me try my luck here with the mongoose again. I see one. And I'm going to just scan to see if I can see some more. Oh, they're grooming one another. Just being cheeky and really trying to push my luck with the mongoose though. Yay. Yes. Come out and see us. There we go. That's lovely. The big reveal. There's two mongoose grooming one another. I don't know why I'm making sounds today. Sorry, I'll stop. There we go. Oh, hello. Now, now, this is a children's show. Well, there's a, it's basically a little cuddle pile at the moment. Everybody wanting to get in on the action so that they can have the favor returned to them. And we know that animals that live in social groups spend a large portion of the day not just grooming themselves but one another and that is important as they continue to strengthen the bonds between the members of this group. They are viciously grooming each other. I'm sure they must have lots of fleas on them. I do like how they lift their back legs up and underneath their front their front legs in all those hard to reach places. Also some fork tail drongos and orange breasted but shrike calling. Wee off they go. Are you scared of the dark? Bats? Spiders? Hold on to your broomsticks because this spooky season, we are creeping it real with our Halloween fireside chat. Join us as we get dressed up and debunk myths behind some of our seemingly scary safari friends. Catch the thrills and chills this Halloween. Bugs and hisses.
Okay, so we have heard uh, we have seen the odd um, or we have heard of the odd frogs that are around here um, especially with the the students at night uh, the frogs here can be a bit vocal and uh, I don't hear any or, or see any of them now but uh, you know in the future drives maybe hopefully we can pick up the sounds and then uh, you'll be able to hear it but don't forget that we are doing the spooky safaris and that's uh, today all the way to the 31st of October and we're going to be looking for all the spooky and uh, the ugly five as well and uh, that's going to be during the afternoon safaris and that's going to be pretty cool and we're going to be looking for all the spooky things of the bushveld Yeah, I think you made the right call this morning, Cameron, wearing some uh, long pants. It is freezing this morning. All right, so while, while we brave this wind, we're going to send you over to Gabe and let's see what else is his plan this morning. Well, guys, we are here on Impala Road now, heading north. I thought I heard some lions roaring, but it was just the lions inside of a poor stomach. And that can only mean one thing. It's time to go visit Charlotte. It's breakfast time. I think today we definitely earned it. And Paul had a good laugh watching me get Wendy out. And he did a very important job of marshalling the whole 4x4 experience there. It has been an absolutely amazing morning for me to be honest with you. First time I've seen Insumi to have her like that, to have her doing her thing. Yeah, what a pleasure. Here comes an Impala. I'm hoping he's running away from some wild dog. That would just really be the cherry on, on top. I have seen him here before. And funny enough, the first time I ever met James Henry was just over here in the bushes. Very very cool. Strange when you drive around and you have all these little flashbacks of the first time this happened, first time, and I wasn't even associated with Wild Earth then. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Let's have a look. The wind is definitely picking up again, <coughs> but we are also in the opening, or in an opening. We've been in the bushes the majority of the morning, so we've been sheltered from the wind, which has been quite pleasant. But yeah, she's crossed over. I wish we could have followed her a little bit longer. But <laughs> I got nothing more to say about that. That was spectacular. Highs, lows, losing her, finding her. Sorry, I just got a death there from an from an impala. Sorry man. Yeah, the wind's got them on edge for sure. Oh that was a beautiful jump. Magnificent, magnificent. So I wonder what happened to those lion tracks then. They were definitely, definitely before the rain. So nine o'clock last night, but they were heading north. I wonder if it wasn't those Sabbath adults who did like a big loop and came around. I'm also really surprised Taylor didn't pick up on them or on the actual lions closer to Pufflesuk Dam. Because I was certain that's where they were going to be this morning. So, let's see. Let's see. I, I hope they reunite. I hope they reunite. I'm so worried. I, I had a look at some of the comments last night on Facebook. And, you know, they were looking thin. And they do need to link up with mom and dad for a bit of a, a meal. Ugh. But it has been absolutely spectacular. The weather just needs to change a little bit. I know there is rain and stuff forecasted. And that is not my favorite. Driving around in wet weather. Rain, open safari vehicle, and Gabe should never be in the same sentence. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Watch out. Oh, wow. 
finally that's super cool <laughs> that is hey little stern book just passed in front of us that is super super cool and i can say for this tint it's the first leopard i've been able to find by myself <laughs> without having to join a sighting so cool little mini victory there very very nice oh she's what a morning what a morning Whether you're a retiree, a recent graduate, or a professional seeking a change, the 55-day eco-training program is for you. With the coaching of experienced training guides, you'll embark on an unforgettable adventure that will give you a deep understanding of wildlife, conservation, and African cultures. If you sign up locally or internationally using this promo code, you'll receive 2,000 Rand off. Uh, we've been sitting here for a while now and we've been watching these beautiful clouds just look at that it's really really spectacular and it's just something that i think most of you really enjoy watching especially on the screens uh, when you have the contrast of the bush felt and then these clouds pretty cool i just saw the hippo momentarily but uh, i think the hippo is not enjoying this wind um, i don't think anything is enjoying this wind and so the hippo is spending a lot of time under the water so we'll just leave him be but what we can see here is uh, there's two terrapins on a log let's see if we can take a look at them so that log in the middle of the of the water there and there they are two terrapins <laughs> shame they're just waiting for that warm sun hoping to get warm this morning i think it's been a, a bit of a, a touch and go for them and the water being a lot cooler than the air i think uh, they're gonna spend a lot more time on that log over there just waiting for that sun to make them warm but remember they are cold-blooded animals and so yeah they they become sluggish in the cold so they won't really be able to swim that well and relying on the outside environment to make them warm uh, until such time as that can happen then uh, they can get a bit more active and a bit more uh, mobile and then maybe they'll jump into the water later on and then continue their morning but wow serious weather i don't know what juma is like at the moment i know eastern cape is is battling along with some rain and as far as one of the guides out there they, they messaged me and said that the bushman's river 
if there's any more rain that it could start flowing and I know out there in the Carnarvondale section uh, the the drainage lines and small rivers have already started flowing there so yeah I haven't seen water in that Bushman's River for years the last time was in 2015 These little guys, yeah. I'm not sure which terrapin this is. I think it could be the marsh terrapin. Oh, shame! Look at that guy, he's lying on the branch like a leopard. <laughs> Very sluggish this morning. You just hold on. Oops, there it just fell in the water. <laughs> All right, we're gonna send you back to Gabe, see what he's up to now. I'm joking. <laughs> okay, we are here in the plains just south of our camp looking at some bataliers, but more importantly, some very cold impala. Their fur is now erected, trying to keep themselves nice and warm here. It is extremely windy. I decided to come up to the plains just to have a look at what's happening with the clouds, and they are nice and dark blue, meaning one thing in my mind cold water. Very cold, cold water, cold rain on its way. Rolo, I think so far and still to this day for me is Biffle's hook. Biffle's hook is a very difficult property to, to memorize. I don't know why, I just struggle. <laughs> I struggle so much with Biffle's hook. Everywhere else is okay. Um, Hoffmans and vessels are so difficult, vessels especially, just because. I don't have a map with road names for it, which is quite entertaining, especially when I get out there. I rely a lot on my tracker. Um, but yeah, before look, I've been traversing there for quite some time and I just can't get it right. Eh? Here it goes the Impala. I was hoping they were all going to start running now because some of them crossed the road, did a little bit of a jump, and joined the rest. The birds are following them, hoping for some easy meals. We've got some Red Bull Buffalo Weavers in front of us. And they are definitely struggling with this wind. That blue cloud, yo, we can feel that icy wind there. Eh? It's gonna be serious, 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 serious. Sorry, I'm just gonna take a little bit of cover from the from the wind so you guys can hear me talk. Just thanks, Chris. And again, you know it from the bottom of my heart, you know what I'm about to say. I'm going to extend the deepest, deepest thank you to all of you for tuning in this morning for the Sunrise Safari, wherever you are, from the bottom of our hearts, it means a lot. Again, without you, this would not be possible. Hey, there's George with the Impalas. I hope, I hope, I hope it was a memorable one and it's a good way to end off a week or if you, like the rest of the world, your week starts on a Sunday, mine ends on a Sunday. Hopefully this afternoon the weather, up the, up the yeah. wishful thinking, I'm hoping that the weather, the wind dies down and it gets a little bit warmer. Hopefully we get some awesome sightings this afternoon as well. It has been one for the books for sure. Guys, if you haven't registered yet to send through your questions, you do that on the website. You can hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter to join in on the conversation. And yeah, the story on my Instagram this morning will be of the Art Park Hall and Wendy and their very close relationship with them poor marshalling us out of it. It's been amazing, guys. And live at the waterhole after this, 10.30 CAT. And from me, thank you and see you this afternoon.